Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. This problem is from the book Mathematics as Problem Solving by Alexander Seufer. I'll share the link down below and let's get started. So we have x to the power x equals x and we're going to be solving for x. We're going to be finding the real solutions and if you have any idea about the complex solutions, you can definitely comment down below. All right, great. So I'm going to have to approach two approaches to this problem. The first approach is going to be, first of all, notice that x does not equal zero here. If x is equal to zero, we have the weird situation x to the power, I mean, zero to the power zero, which is not very good, as you know. So I'm going to ignore that part and divide both sides by x. And if we do that, we get x to the power x minus one equals one. So this is kind of nice because I have a number on the right hand side. And as you know, there's a couple ways to obtain one, right? If we're dealing with real numbers. So here's what happens. For example, if the base is one, then this is always gonna work because any power of one is gonna be one. So x equals one is a good candidate. It's a solution. Or we can have something like x equals negative one, right? But at the same time, we have to have that negative one needs to be raised to an even power. So x minus one needs to be even. But notice that if x is negative one, then negative one minus negative one is equal to negative two, which is an even number. So x equals negative one works as well. So we got two solutions already. Let's see if there's any other solutions to this equation. Now, if you also consider the fact that the exponent can be zero regardless of the base, right? Except for zero, of course, we know that x does not equal zero here. So if x minus one, which is the exponent, is equal to zero and x does not equal zero, from here, we also get x equals one, which is not an extra solution. It's just the same thing. Great. So we have two solutions so far. Let's take a look at it uh, from a different perspective. Let's use a little bit of calculus here to see what's going on with this function. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take this function. Let me write it down. I have y equals x to the power x minus one. And then I'm going to write it in order to differentiate it. I'll make it a little easier. We can write this as e to the power ln something, you know, x to the power x minus one. And I can just move the x minus one and write this as e to the power x minus one times ln x. And this makes the, the differentiation easier. Otherwise I have to use implicit or some other way to do it. Okay, now let's go ahead and differentiate it. Uh, this is e to the power u where you use a function of x. As you know, the derivative of e to the power u is e to the power u times u prime. I can do the u prime first and write it as u prime times e to the power u, pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and do the u prime first. u is the exponent here, the derivative of x minus one times ln x. That's a product, so I'm gonna use the product rule. And the product rule tells me that the derivative of x minus one, which is one, times the derivative, uh, I mean, the, the function itself, ln x, plus the derivative of ln x, which is one over x, times the first function, which is x minus one. So this just gives us u prime, which is the derivative of the inside as uh, mentioned in the chain rule. And this will be multiplied by e to the power of that, but I can also write it as x to the power x minus one, which is the same as this one, right? Great. So that's the derivative. And what I like to do with this derivative is I want to set it equal to zero. Why, why, am I doing, why am I doing this? You're going to see in a little bit. I'd like to look at the minimum and maximum points of this function if there are any. I want to basically know how this function behaves. So I'm going to set the derivative equal to zero, but notice that x to the power x minus one cannot equal zero. So I'm just gonna um, set the other part, which is a factor of y prime equal to zero. And let's see what this gives us, right? So we, we get the function ln x plus x minus one over x equals zero. And obviously this is a very non-standard equation. We can't really solve it just like normal me by normal means. So what we need to do is guess and check. And I know some people are like, you're not supposed to guess, you have to solve the problem. Well, it's a problem solving strategy, whether you like it or not. So in this case, I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? X equals one is a solution. Okay, great. So X equals one is a solution because zero plus zero equals zero. Everybody knows that I think, right? So X equals one is a critical point, but let's see what happens around uh, one. So notice that our function cannot be zero, but at the same time, I want to restrict my domain to positive numbers of course, x equals negative one is a valid solution. I'm not saying anything against that, but for anything else, we want to stay positive because with negative numbers raised to some powers, you know, crazy things happen. They're just gonna go up and down, so on and so forth. Anyway, so 
x must be positive, and if x is positive, I can kind of break it down into two intervals. So I can say that if x is between 0 and 1, then we get the following. Okay, if x is less than 1 and greater than 0, ln x is going to be negative, as you know. If you consider the graph of ln x, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then uh, what about the other piece? If x is between 0 and 1, x minus 1 over x is also going to be negative. Therefore, their sum is also going to be negative, which means that y prime is going to be less than 0. Great. What happens if x is greater than 1? Then ln x is going to be positive. And of course, our other piece, which is added, is going to be positive because think about something greater than 1 like 2. And this indicates that y prime is positive. So what does this tell you? Well, this is what it should tell you. We have the y prime, we have the x, and we have the function y. So 1 is a critical point, and what happens to the left of 1 and to the right of 1? Well, the function, if, of course, this is 0, by the way, not it's not coming from negative infinity, just 0 to 1, and then 1 to infinity. So if x is between 0 and 1, then our function it has a negative derivative, otherwise it has a positive derivative. This means that our function is actually, well, I was probably supposed to write it the other way around. So we have a negative derivative here and a positive derivative, which indicates that our function is decreasing and then increasing, which means that we have a minimum at x equals 1. So our function y equals x to the power x minus 1 has a minimum, has a minimum at x equals 1. And to be more specific, that point is 1, 1, right? At 1, 1, our function has a minimum. So it's kind of like this. The function goes down and then goes up, and this is 1.1, which is where the function makes a minimum point. Great. Okay, now, here is the thing. We are trying to solve the equation x to the power x minus 1 is equal to 1, and we see that at y equals 1, we have a minimum. But at the same time, that means that the line y equals 1 is tangent to this graph at x equals 1, right? Well, y equals 1 is obviously tangent to this function x to the power x minus 1 at x equals 1. Great. So that is going to be a solution because the two graphs intersect. They touch each other. Okay? That's going to be my first approach. And I want to show you graphically what this looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions. Great. So now I have the following. I have y equals x to the power x minus 1. And notice that we're talking about uh, 0 to 1, right? I mean, uh, sorry, x, x values need to be positive, obviously, x can go infinity. So, but we're talking about the positive values of x. And then here we have the y equals 1. And notice that we have a tangent line here. So that means that these two graphs will intersect at a single point. So x equals 1 is a solution. Great. So now we're going to be looking at this problem from a slightly different perspective, and let's go ahead and do that. Now, what happens if we approach it a little differently? How about taking a look at y equals x to the power x? Okay. So if you look at y, y equals x to the power x, let's go ahead and write it this way, e to the power ln x to the power x, which can be written as e to the power x ln x after moving the x to the front, right? Let's go ahead and differentiate this, you know, because we could also handle the problem this way. And let me just give this to you. You can differentiate it just like the other function, and you're going to be getting the following. Now, notice that if I replace the derivative uh, at uh, 1, like replace the x with 1 in the derivative function, I do get that y prime at 1 is equal to 1 times 1, which is 1. Well, if you look at the function y equals x, then you notice that its slope is equal to 1. So we kind of have a function whose tangent line at x equals 1 has a slope of 1, and we have a line that has a slope of 1 that goes through the same point. Now, what is that supposed to mean? If you look at this graphically again, we're going to notice the following. So we have the two functions, y equals x to the power x and y equals x, intersecting at 1 comma 1, therefore x equals 1 is going to be a solution. But also remember that x equals negative 1 is another solution, so this function has two real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.